Hello everyone and welcome again to Fist Chat, the vodcast that features discussions on the topics of film, science and technology. My name is Ben Warner and I'm joined once again by my good friend and colleague Steve Kern to uh, remunerate over the fact that we are just two people amongst seven billion. That's right. Hello <laughs> to seven, pe- seven billion potential Fist Chat listeners. Oh. Can you imagine if we ever reached that audience? How how, how big would we be? One (laughs) percent, Ben. That's all I want. Just one (laughs) percent. Absolutely, absolutely. So, in case you uh, in case you missed it, um, the uh, it was reported that the seventh billionth person was uh, born uh, this week. Or last week? Last week, uh, the UN said, but I think there's an error margin on that of fifty-two million. Yeah, so and that's actually something we can talk about a bit later because that was something I found that um, there's some conjecture as to when exactly um, we can say that uh, that many people. But for you know, for for lack of better uh, you know observational whatever or empirical evidence, we'll just say that it was seven billion we've reached. Don't, don't kill my buzz, Ben. I've already partied all weekend. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so by any stretch of the ima- imagination, by pure numbers, um, you know, I think as we were discussing before, we're, um, we're pretty successful as a, as a species from that aspect. Look, there's no question humans are incredibly successful at having got to 7 billion. I mean, uh, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people living on this planet and we're living pretty well. And um, I just put it into context. I've spoken in the past to uh, experts about this. And they reckon that if we didn't have technology and civilization, we'd probably get to maybe about three billion would be the the sort of Mm. maximum amount of humans that you could have. So it's technology and agriculture and the way we live in cities and the way we do stuff that allows us to have seven billion. That's a great achievement. Well done, humans. (laughs) Absolutely. And I guess it's things like you're saying, medical advances, um, improvements in nutrition and all of that. People are living longer. So, um, and all of that sort of combined ends up, um, you get seven billion people and it's still rising. As I've uh, read here that, uh, what is it? World's population is set to zoom past seven billion this year with a potential of two babies per second being, uh, being born. Um, that's unbelievable, isn't that, it? That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. Um, and the UN's projecting by twenty one hundred, we'll hit ten billion. Ten billion, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd like to comment on that, though. I'd like to comment yeah. on that because once again, I've been lucky enough to talk to people in this field. They reckon nine billion by about twenty fifty, mm. and they reckon that's where it'll probably uh, plateau out for a number of reasons. But. Okay. Uh, but they reckon nine, ten billion. That's it. They're, you wouldn't really get many more humans, not unless, you know. Of course, uh, I think as we've done in a previous fist chat uh, episode, we get immortality. In which case, then it's unlimited. <laughs> Absolutely. But okay, so I mean, maybe if we'll just a couple of brief reasons why it's going to plateau out. I mean, what's to stop? What, what's to stop this expansion? Well, basically. Uh, to uh, once you get to about nine or ten billion, exactly as you said, is it two babies a second? Yeah, yeah. The the rate at which you have to have births versus uh, deaths, uh, like increases to a point where it's probably not practical for even nine billion people to produce that many uh, offspring. And uh, that's the other reason, actually, which you pointed to before, why there's a fifty-two million uh, error, is because people are dying all the time. Yeah, and you know you can't really be certain. But it's, it's that rate between birth and uh, death that determines uh, population size. Yep. Obviously, as people live longer, um, yeah. But, but on current projections, if, if humans continue only to live, you know, um, or expand their lives, uh, um, lives at the rate they are now, you probably wouldn't get past 9 or 10 billion. Okay. Well, that's quite interesting because, you know, if you look back at the numbers, um, you know, it was only two billion uh, in 1950, and to go from um, two billion to seven billion in 60 years, when the previous, you know, how many thousands of years it took us that long to get to two billion, um, it's quite incredible. I mean, a, a lot of it, of course, is as you're saying, technology and yeah. agriculture and all of that. There's also, I guess, um, that uns- sort of unspoken thing where in the develop developing world, um, there um, it's it's uh, there's far more. Um, far more uh, babies being born 
um, that, that that is uh, than in the Western world. If anything, the Western world it's um, sort of scaling back uh, quite a bit. Absolutely, but also as uh, we've seen population growth in those uh, developing countries, uh, part of the thing is as uh, conditions have improved, there's less mortality, less infant mortality, and people are generally living longer, and that's also helping kick that along. So, uh, I mean, that's that's you know, if you want to look at the problems facing the world, I mean. We often forget, I think, that we are improving, uh, you know, life for everyone. You know I mean, I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination we're doing a fantastic job or we have, you know, this isn't just even the beginning. There's, there's a long, long way to go. But, you know, by and large, we've started to do that as we've become more advanced, um, you know, technology-wise and, and more advanced, I think, also uh, with our outlooks on life. So I think that they're the... They're the things that we need to keep in mind. And, and if everyone, if all 7 billion of us really do make an effort to uh, look after one another, well, then the human race, you know, will uh, only benefit. Absolutely. But I mean, because like you're saying, one of the problems you've got probably around a billion people, like they don't have enough to eat, for example. Um, you know, maybe even more than that, they don't have proper living conditions, you know, and that's a lot of people when you actually think about it. But like you said, if you, um, they're all sort of problems to work on. And um, it's a question of also, um, say, in the Western world, and I think we've discussed this already, is the idea of we have to rethink how we um, use our resources and also the way we, do, you know, cultivate food and all that sort of thing so that um, there's much less waste because we're very wasteful um, in the Western world. And well, I'll give you an interesting stat on that. For food alone, in the West here, we waste 40% of our food through spoilage after we buy it. I mean, that, that's, that's yeah. a horrible statistic. In the developing countries they lose 40% of the food before they can get it to the people. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a very sobering thought. Yeah, and that's, that's quite horrendous. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay, so, and, and I guess this sort of leads into the idea of sustainability as well. I mean, we've talked about before, um, you know, things like economic growth, um, how that is necessarily, whether the argument is whether that's bringing people, that's raising their living standards. There's also the question of... Um, figuring out a way to accommodate all these people while still being able to uh, sustain uh, everything, sustain all of our resources, sustain the planet as well. Uh, that, that's, that's quite a tricky uh, sort of uh, situation and it would probably lead in the next 100 years to a lot of different um, ways of doing things. We'll probably be forced, if we, if we don't um, come up with a way to, if we don't say, oh, we've got to stop and you know, do something about this. If that doesn't happen, it will be forced upon us one way or the other. Oh, look, there, there's no question. There's no question about that. And, and you know, it's, it's quite interesting. I think, you know, the 7 billionth uh, human being born also marks a time when uh, the human species has to change the way that they do things. You know, any, cities can, can be very energy efficient and they can provide food sources uh, for the inhabitants and they can, they can be environmentally sound but unfortunately, we really need to build brand new cities. And our cities where they are now are usually on the prime agricultural land. I mean, yeah. really, we should be building cities which probably, you know, we wouldn't be used to living in yeah. yet. We need to build those. We need to move into them. And we probably need to uh, revisit the, uh, the farming land that sits beneath uh, a whole lot of cities. And it's making a better use of, of that land as well. I mean, for example, Australia and America have the biggest houses in the world um, and uh, there's an idea now the, of a shift towards um, high-density living, um, reducing the overall footprint. You don't really, you don't need to live in a house that's, um, you know, got 10 bedrooms. Well, that's ridiculous, but you don't need to, uh, I mean, live in any with uh, so many bedrooms and have, you know, your three cars or whatever. You can uh, make do without that. And, and the other thing on that as well, and the resource thing, which I don't think's properly been addressed yet, but is is we need to recycle more. Yeah. You know, as we've spoken about in a previous fist chat as well, if we were to keep our demand for resources at the level they are now, the planet's just not going to be able to supply it. And, you know, that goes for energy as well. Fossil fuels now, like, uh, once again, no matter what you think or the reasons or whatever, you used to, you know, put a hole in the ground and oil used to come out. You know, now we're having to dig under polar ice caps. We're having to, like, drill underground, 
you know, we're having to, to you know, set up on our, uh, like, prime agricultural land to access it. it. It's time to give that away. It's too hard. There yeah. are easier ways. There's nuclear, there's solar, there's geothermal. Yeah. Let's get on with it. Yeah, absolutely. So we're at seven billion. So, um, and I guess in our lifetime, we're gonna. How much um, was the projection to twenty fifty? It was uh, uh, nine billion. Sorry, how much? Nine billion. Nine billion. So we're, you know, all things being uh, equal, we'll probably uh, live to see that. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm hoping so. <laughs> Although it might be so terrible, Ben. Maybe we just hope not. Uh, hopefully, it's not a soil and green type of world um, at that stage where uh, states are um, uh, are a fantasy that uh, uh, were, uh, <laughs> you know, um, part of our uh, ancestral living or something like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, it'll be food, Ben, but not as we know it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, just having a look, um, just to finish up, I guess. Um, yeah, you're saying there's a margin of error of at least 1% with um, these sort of stats. Um, just one other stat that I thought was interesting, that um, we actually added 1 billion people in the last 10 years. Yeah, um, no, it's, just, it's phenomenal. So that, that's quite incredible. And... Um, and there's a lot of the commentary around uh, the announcement of the seventh billionth person was, um, as we discussed before we started, um, it's a lot more circumspect than um, than celebratory, um, which is interesting. Um, you know, there's um, questions of, oh, is, w this can't be good. Um, you know, it's going to make things worse um, and all that sort of thing. But like you said, if you, you, you adjust and be a bit more flexible, then... Um, Anything's possible. Well, look, it's true. I think it's a wake-up call for a, for us all. And I'll, I'll just summarise just some of the things that uh, in my blog, if uh, anyone uh, gets to there to read it, you know, is that we are incredibly successful. And uh, basically, of all the mammals, only animals that matter to us or are closely associated to us uh, really occur in huge population numbers. And that's purely yeah. for agricultural uh, and, and food production reasons. You know, if you look at, uh, like, uh, other large mammals, they're dying out. Chimps, big cats, polar bears, you name it. It's all human encroachment. Yeah. We need to really rethink about what we're doing with the planet and how we're using the resources. But, you know, we can become a great species. We can become a space-fearing species. We can achieve marvellous things if collectively, as 7 billion people, we start to work together rather than to work against each other. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's probably um, a good place to, uh, to finish up. And, yep, as, uh, as you mentioned, um, uh, Steve's got a new blog uh, on this topic and we'll be posting that um, in the next few days, um, along with uh, this episode, of course. So um, thanks again, Steve, for the, uh, the chat. Um, uh, always... Uh, to my 1% my of 7 billion listeners. That's okay. right. What, step by step, person by person, we're going to reach every <laughs> every single one of these people. <laughs> Let's see how many tweets we can collect in the next week. Oh, I'm sure it'll be easy to get to seven billion on that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, don't forget our website www.fistchat.com. You can get all of our links, videos, MP3s, and uh, now blogs um, on uh, on that website. Uh, so that's it for this week's episode. So we'll catch you next week.